Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me for this Healthy Talk Express. Um, today we're going over stress friend or foe. My name is Ashley Hernandez. I'm the health and wellness educator for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension of Bear County. So the reason why I kind of wanted to go over stress today is, um, you know, as adults we face stress throughout our lives, uh, whether it's work, family, um, health, any issues that may occur. Um, but right now it's really important because of the circumstances we're dealing with with COVID-19. I felt it was very important for everybody to kind of take a look at, you know, what stress is and the effects it can have on our health, as well as what we can do to understand it a little bit better and to kind of help um, cope with that stress. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and begin. This is Stacy Moritz. A married 44-year-old mother of three boys, she described her life in Portland, Oregon as pretty idyllic. That was until after her life changed dramatically five years ago when she was separated from her husband and was laid off. The biggest blow came when her husband was terribly injured. Cycling home from work, he was hit by a car and dragged 30 feet. While he didn't die, he did suffer profound brain injuries that required a lengthy hospital stay and rehabilitation. Stacy, who stayed with her husband during this time, recalls wondering whether or not he would ever recover. His functional ability at the time was that of an infant, Stacy says. He couldn't speak. He lay in bed surrounded by netting so he wouldn't fall out in diapers. Miraculously, he continued to improve. During his hospital stay, Stacy remembers when his recovery took a turn. Uh, for the better. I walked into the room with our children and he cried and mouthed the words, I love you. Stacy says, it was just overwhelming. You know, he recognized them. That was the significance of it. He knew who we were and that gave us a little bit of hope. After his release from the hospital, Stacy took over her husband's care because she didn't want to put him in a nursing home. It was the right thing to do, for him and for my children, she explains. That decision would mean many years of unrelenting stress for Stacy. There was also the financial stress of caring for her husband. Throughout this difficult time, <clears throat> the chronic stress undermined her health. Stacy says, my own well-being has taken a backseat just because everyone around me needs so much. Her high stress life as a caregiver to both her children and her husband caused her to max out her sick leave due to her own illnesses. Despite this difficult time, she got a full-time job and her husband is now working part-time. She and her husband have since divorced, but they are moving on with their lives. Stacy Moritz's story is an example of chronic or long-term stress that over time took a toll on her health. While the stresses that we experience may not be this life-altering, uncontrolled stress can affect us both physically and psychologically. Do you think stress is a friend or foe, good or bad? Stress is actually both a friend or foe. It can be good or bad. It's a friend because some amount of stress actually keeps us motivated and productive but too much stress can be harmful for our health. In the United States, we do have a problem with um, having too much stress. Our stressed out society can cause health problems for all of us. In the 29, or 2014 uh, Burden of Stress in America study found that half of the 2,505 participants actually experienced major stress events within the two years. <laughs> from 2012 to 2014. Some of these were things like um, reported from health issues or death of loved ones, also work problems. These were kind of the major leading um, issues that they were having causing the stress. The amount of stress we experience is another cause for concern. <clears throat> The 2007 Stress in America survey showed that adults over 18 described their stress levels as higher than the level of stress they believe is actually healthy. 
Findings show that on a scale where 1 is little to no stress and 10 is a great deal of stress, the average um, reported stress level was actually 5.1 for these individuals. In the same stress in America study, 44% of adults stated their stress levels increased in the last five years. So our fast-paced, technology-driven life is actually a very stressful existence. Modern society stresses differ from primitive times. Early man stress typically involved a life-or-death situation that required a fight-or-flight response. Imagine the woolly mammoth or the lion lurking around the corner, and you have a good picture of his hostile environment. For man and animal, fight, fighting or fleeing was the only way to survive. Stress has evolved to a psychological threat, um, real or perceived. In the 21st century, we are confronted with work family issues, caring for aging parents, job loss due to corporate downsizing, and many other problems unknown to prehistoric humans. The stress response helps us survive when we face danger. As humans, we are wired to respond to stress in a fight or flight mode, and yet this is typically not an option for our modern world. Stress is not just an emotion or an unpleasant feeling. It is a complex biological response to a perceived threat. All functions aimed at survival. In a basic explanation, this is pretty much what happens when we are stressed. The brain processes a signal of a threat or a stressor. This begins in the amygdala and then the hypothalamus. A warning is sent to the pituitary gland located in the brain. This gland is a chemical messenger secreting the adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACHT, to activate the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland releases three stress hormones, adrenaline, norepinephrine, and cortisol. The surge of these three hormones revs up our body to react to the threat. The physical effects of stress include heart rate increase, sweating, shaking, dilated pupils, bladder relaxation, slow digestion, flushed face, tunnel vision, and dry mouth. When the threat or danger has passed, the parasympathetic nervous system relaxes our body, returning it to a state of balance that is actually referred to as homeostasis. The stress can be temporary or it can linger for a long time, especially if you're experiencing chronic stress. Our stress can be acute or chronic. Acute or short-term stress is the most common form and is our fight or flight response. This type of stress can be good or bad. A good stress can be a happy event, like a marriage or an exhilarating fast run down a ski slope. Bad stresses are like situations that cause distress, such as bumping, bumper to bumper traffic or running late for an appointment. Episodic stress, acute stress, occurs frequently. It occurs particularly in individuals who tend to be worriers or those who have a type A personality, a perfectionist personality. Oftentimes, those with, who suffer episodic stress resist change. Chronic stress happens when people see no way out of their problem. Traumatic events are usually the basis for chronic stress. Long-term chronic stress will eventually affect a person's health. Research has shown that many diseases are linked to chronic stress, such as depression, cardiovascular disease, HIV, AIDS, asthma, weakened immune system, slow wound healing, upper respiratory tract infections, and herpes viral infections. Anger, fear, and sadness are emotional responses to stress that can have a negative effect on your cardiovascular system, such as high blood pressure. Increased anxiety and grief have been associated with cardiac events, such as heart attacks. Obesity has also been linked to stress because of negative moods 
many lead to seeking comfort foods to feel better or eating more when they're upset. Most of these foods are usually high in fat, salt, and sugar, which may cause weight gain. Sleep is also affected by stress. Lost sleep can make us prone to accidents and interfere with our ability to perform daily activities. So let's talk a little bit more about the myths to stress. To better understand stress and its effects on our health, we're gonna discuss these four different common myths about stress, kind of give us a little bit more perspective. Myth one, stress is the same for everyone. This is not true. Uh, this is a common misunderstanding. Stress is actually unique for each individual. What is stressful for one person may not be for another. Uh, we can recall a time whenever we experienced something stressful, an event that caused us to have a negative reaction while someone else undergoing the same situation was actually unaffected. To manage stress, we need to learn what our stress triggers are and how we respond physically and psychologically Myth two, stress is always bad for you. This is wrong view. As we discussed earlier, stress is actually both good and bad. Stress um, is our human condition. Imagine stress like a tension in a violin string. Too little and the music is dull and raspy. And too much and the music is shrill or the string snaps. This, the real issue here is how we manage our stress. Managed stress makes us productive and happy. Mismanaged stress can affect our health and even kill us. A mild amount of stress is needed for our body to function at its best. Acute stress can even boost our immune system. Chronic unmanaged stress is actually toxic to our health and can lead to serious health is issues and conditions. Myth three, stress is everywhere, so you can't do anything about it. Not so. Uh, you can actually plan your life so stress doesn't have to overwhelm you. Effectively, managing your stress involves setting priorities to work on simple problems first, solving them, and then maybe moving on to a more complex issue. Stress may appear to be everywhere when you are poorly managing your problems and prioritizing becomes difficult. Myth four. No symptoms, no stress. Again, this is an incorrect view. Minor symptoms such as headaches or stomach acid can't be ignored. These physical signs may indicate that stress is getting out of hand and we need to address the problem. Identifying strategies to better cope with your stress is critical to handling life's changes. Because stress is a normal part of our life, managing stress has to be part of your daily lifestyle habits. Learning what your stressors and symptoms will help you find out positive ways to counteract the bad effects of stress so that you can live a balanced, satisfied life. Thinking back to recent stressful events, how did you respond? Do any of these behaviors apply to you? I eat to calm down. I drink alcohol or smoke to calm down. I rush around, but don't get much done. I put off doing things I need to do. I try to do many things at once. I work too much and I slow down. If any of these behaviors are typical response to stress, it may mean that you are not dealing with stress as well as you can. Positive, healthy approaches to coping with your stress may be needed especially to lower your risk for chronic stress. Whether it's good or bad stress, we need to control the levels of stress we experience. The 2007 Stress in America study shows that today's adults are highly stressed to the point of being unhealthy. Impl implementing simple lifestyle changes is a strategy to lower your stress. There are many practical strategies to tame your stress. Today, we're going to focus on five strategies. Practicing positive self-talk, engaging in physical activity, finding pleasure by doing things that you enjoy, connecting with others, 
and getting enough sleep. After our discussion, I would like you to make a personal pledge to practice a stressless activity for a week and hopefully continue this regular habit. Keep in mind that while stress management activities are helpful in many ways, it does not replace any treatment you may need if you're suffer suffering from chronic stress. If that is you, please talk to your doctor. Let's begin discussing the five stressless activities. Activity number one, positive self-talk. Optimism is important to manage stress. It is looking at the glass half full rather than half empty. It doesn't mean being in denial about life's unpleasant situations. When you think positively, you can approach unpleasantness in a productive, healthy way. Self-talk is the endless stream of unspoken thoughts that run through your head. These automatic thoughts can be positive or negative. Some of your self-talk comes from logic and reason. Other self-talk may arise from false thoughts you create because of lack of information. When your self-talk is mostly positive, you will have a healthier outlook on life and attitude towards yourself. This allows you to better cope with stressful situations, which reduces the harmful health effects of stress on your body. Activity number two, be active. Physical activity is a combination in combination with stress reducing program is extremely important for many reasons. It is an effective distraction from stressful events. It lowers harmful effects to stress on blood pressure and the heart. In fact, exercise protects the heart. Physical activity improves the quality of sleep, allowing you to rest better at night Physical activity also reduces your risk of depression and loss of mental functioning. Virtually any form of activity um, and exercise is beneficial. Physical activity pumps up your feel-good endorphins and other natural neural chemicals that enhance your self of well-being. Your sense of well-being, sorry. <clears throat> activity number three, find pleasure. When stress makes you feel bad, do something that makes you feel good. Even if you're ill or down, you can find pleasure in simple things, such as going for a drive, chatting with a friend, or reading a good book. Exercising is another pleasurable activity that can provide both enjoyment and relaxation. For myself, uh, when I get too stressed, some things I like to do is I like to read. I also like to paint um, or do crafts, uh, things like that as well as playing um, board games kind of help me to relax and take a step back so that way if there is a difficult problem, I'm able to look at it again with new eyes and hopefully come up with a better solution. Activity number four, connecting with others. I know at this point in time with our situation, it is kind of difficult. Um, we're not able to go do some of the things that we normally would, um, whether it's, you know, connecting with people at work, um, connecting with your friends, getting to go have time um, to yourself. Um, I know myself, I have three children, um, two of which we're homeschooling at home. Um, my husband and I are both working from home, so it gets a little hectic and crazy. And the thing is, is connecting with others you know, we, we have our phones, we have um, internet, you know, we can try to use social media. Um, I myself like to talk to my family and my best friend um, on FaceTime when I get a little too stressed out. I feel like it's a good way. Even sometimes when I don't feel like talking, um, trying to push yourself to where, okay, you know what, I should go ahead and call. And then after you have that call, you feel a lot better. So connecting with others when you're stressed out, um, and irritable, you like you most likely want to be left alone. Like I said, sometimes I get that way. Um, but instead, reach out to your family and your friends and make social connections. A dose of friendship is great medicine because it offers a distraction and actually provides support to tolerate life's up and downs. Um, so take a coffee break with a family member or friend, email a relative, or visit your place of worship. 
Um, I know, like I said, at this time, we're not able to do a lot of those things. But some things that you can do is just making sure, you know, to have that phone call, maybe do a video chat, um, maybe take some time um, to reflect, um, and also just kind of chat with somebody. Um, again, also remember social distancing at the moment, but there are ways for us to still connect to others, even if we're not close and personal with them. Um, another way is also volunteering um, for charitable groups, which actually help benefit you while you're actually serving others. Activity five, get your Z's. Sleep is necessary for your brain and your body to recharge. When you are sleep deprived and your mood is affected, you have low energy levels and you're unable to concentrate. With six to eight hours of restful sleep, you are able to function optimally, which includes handling the stress of the day. Most healthy adults were built for 16 hours of wakefulness and need an average of eight hours of sleep at night. If you are having trouble getting the shut eye you need, make sure that you have a quiet, relaxing bedtime routine. Listen to some soothing music and stick to a regular sleeping schedule. As we have discussed, these five stress um, relief activities are ways that you can actually reduce the negative effects of stress. Now is the time for you to take control of your stress rather than allow your stress to control you. I would like you to take action this week by setting a goal to practice at least one of these stress management strategies. While there are a number of other strategies to reduce stress, this will put you on the path to a stressless life. <clears throat> As you consider your decision to make a stressless goal, what are the possible barriers to managing your stress? For many of us, it is a matter of making up our mind that we can do it. Attitude plays a big role in how we manage our stress. Hans Seely, the father of stress research, once said, adopting the right attitude can convert a negative stress into a positive one. That holds true for you today. Believing that you have the power to change is the positive attitude you need to make healthy choices. Adopting one or all of five of these stress management activities is a way to feel empowered. For example, positive thinking allows you to reframe your views in a more constructive way rather than giving into harmful emotions like anger and sadness. Nurturing yourself is part of managing stress. Reflecting back on Stacy Moritz's story, her word of caution was that her health took a backseat during her husband's recovery. Even when life gets hectic, simple things like a yoga class or reading a book are ways for us to make our health our priority. For most of us that have families or, um, you know, we, we have a lot of demands that we have to meet in our lives and we spend a lot of time taking care of others and it may be hard for us to satisfy our own needs. However, in the end, you'll find that you'll be a better caregiver um, to those people who may need you when you take care of yourself. We cannot overlook the mind-body connection of our health. When life gets overwhelming, managing your stress is a feel-good remedy to boost your emotional well-being and to mentally recharge. As I described earlier, chronic stress takes a toll on a person's health. Reducing the toxic effects of stress is the main benefit of engaging in positive lifestyle habits. These five activities do not require any skill and are doable for everyone. For Stacy Moritz, her chronic stress eventually affected her health. Caring for her seriously injured husband and having school-age children put unusual emotional demands on her. Many of us may not experience a traumatic event like Stacy, but her situation is a reminder that uncontrolled stress can have health consequences. Health-enhancing behaviors like diet and physical activity can protect people from disease. For example, there's strong evidence showing that eating healthy and exercising can actually minimize um, conditions that cause cardiovascular disease and cancer. Protecting your brain is another reason for better managing stress. 
There is research showing that specific areas of your brain can be damaged by chronic stress. For example, the hippocampus is an organ in the back of the brain that plays a role in processing emotions. Chronic stress can impair the hippocampus, causing it to lose its ability to shut down stress response. Neuroimaging studies of people with severe depression and anxiety disorders have shown their hippocampus has shrunken in size. The good news is, is the brain can heal, and this effect is reversible. Managing your stress is critical to maintain a strong immune system. An interesting fact about stress is that it can be good and bad for your immune system. During acute stress, your immune system is able to move immune cells to areas of the body where it is needed to defend pathogens or disease-causing agents, such as viruses or bacteria. However, with chronic stress, our immune system is suppressed and unable to prevent disease, which makes us prone to illnesses. Aside from preventing potential harm from chronic stress, stress management activities offer other advantages. Positive thinking changes our outlook on life and increases our ability to handle stressful situations. Physical activity is a way to relax when you feel stress building up. As we discussed earlier, exercising increases the body's production of feel-good endorphins, a type of neurotransmitter in the brain. Engaging in pleasurable activities can bring satisfaction and contentment. Accepting help from family and friends is a way to build a support system that can get you through difficult times. Getting enough sleep will energize you to function well during the day and be mentally alert to deal with stressful events. Understandably, there are times when stress keeps us up at night, but with good health habits, we can better cope with stress so we're able to sleep. In summary, preventing illnesses and maintaining a high level of functioning and making our health a priority are all rewards for managing stress. Research is strong that chronic stress can kill us. Managing day-to-day -day stress is a way to avoid chronic stress. Starting today, you can take action to be in control of your stress. Make it your personal pledge to reduce stress this week by practicing at least one of these stress-less activities. You will receive a handout today, Take Action, Stress Less, which describes the five stress management activities. On the reverse side is a small log to check the days you complete the strategy. Also on the reverse side of the handout is a one week stress log to monitor what, you, what are your stressors and your reactions. This resource is a practical way to learn how stress affects you and your life. With the information, you can identify stress management strategies to address problem areas. For example, you may find that running late is a stress trigger. Time management strategies, such as making a to-do list or task and prioritizing your tasks, can be a positive solution. Because of the importance of controlling stress, we encourage you to share this resource with your families and your friends because this information will also benefit them. As you consider making a stress-less personal pledge, reflect on the words of Subha Gupta, author of Stress Management, A Holistic Approach. The majority of people who are easily stressed are the ones who think too much about the problems instead of solutions. Always focus on the solutions. Again, I want to thank everybody for joining me. Um, I know that this is going to be recorded and put up, but I would like to let you know that you can feel free to email me um, and with the link you have my email address if you have any type of questions or if you would like some additional resources, um, you can feel free to contact me by email anytime. Um, also, I would like to encourage you to please take the survey that is going to be sent to you. Um, so that way it kind of gives us some feedback. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit with me and kind of learning a little bit more about stress. I hope that this helps you out and I'd love to hear back from you if any of this um, has helped you or you have anything that you would like to say about it. I hope you guys have a great day. Um, remember to stay safe and let's try to stress less. Thank you so much.